Hi, I'm Angie Kellen, and this is Shot Talk with Aki Fujimura. Aki is the CEO of D2S, and D2S is the managing company sponsor of the eBeam Initiative. Hello, Aki. Hi, Angie. Thanks so much for joining me today. Ah, thank you. Well, I'm going to start off with a couple of congratulations. And first off, it's going to be for D2S and Micron receiving second place at the Best Paper Award at the SPIE Photomass Technology Conference in Monterey. And then secondly, D2S, who launched their new product, TrueMask ILT. Maybe you can go into a little bit about TrueMask ILT, the product itself, and then um, a little bit about why the paper had received such recognition. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Angie. And yeah, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to the first place winner, um, Actinic Mask Inspection uh, from LaserTech. Uh, the very uh, significant uh, development. EUV was a big thing in the conference, and um, they led the way. And so that was great. And um, True Mask IoT, though, um, um, you know, I think was also great. <laughs> and uh, 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 it's the the world's first full chip. IoT in one day. Um, so uh, uh, IoT has always been known to produce superior wafer quality, but um, uh, there's been really two things that's been uh, uh, getting in the way of its adoption uh, at the full chip scale. One was uh, uh, variable shape beam based method of writing masks uh, forced it to become not curvilinear, but Manhattanized. And that slowed it down and also reduced the quality of uh, what you can achieve on the mask as well as on the wafer. Um, and uh, the arrival of multi-beam, uh, which is also news in this conference, um, uh, 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 enables um, curvilinear shapes to be written. So uh, True Mask IoT is the, the uh, world's first IoT product or any kind of a OPC product that specifically targets multi-beam as the mask writing instrument. Um, so um, uh, that's uh, the first significant thing. And then uh, the other barrier to full chip adoption of uh, curvilinear IoT uh, had been uh, runtime. Um, just uh, uh, processing time uh, had taken uh, weeks and weeks, probably. So it's only been uh, able to be used, or not curvilinear, but uh, uh, IoT at all, has only been uh, being able to be used on, on hot spots, right? Really bad spots, you use it, but every place else you had to use OPC because otherwise it would take too long to process. Um, so uh, the arrival of full chip IoT in a day um, uh, should be a significant uh, uh, event for the industry and it is the natural progression of what uh, multi-beam uh, mask writing uh, is enabling. And uh, the, uh, thank you very much for, to uh, Micron uh, who was the partner in this paper and uh, uh, we produced many, many pictures. In fact, uh, Leo Pang, who presented the paper, uh, showed uh, movies um, uh, because we had to compose so many pictures. So hundreds and hundreds, even thousands uh, of pictures were shown and some pictures were shown both on the wafer and on mask. The mask was uh, written at Nuflair using the MBM-1000. So that's that's uh, significant in itself. And then uh, the wafers uh, were, the mask was processed on Micron, and then uh, wafers were printed on uh, Micron. And uh, uh, one of the most uh, striking uh, movie um, that uh, Leo showed, uh, showed a process window uh, for a particular uh, test configuration uh, improving by over 100% over their process of record uh, processed by OPC. So uh, very, very, very uh, a significant outcome, I thought. Well, also at the event, the eBeam Initiative held its annual reception. And of course, it was well attended as usual. You also held a panel discussion that covered the mm -hmm. mask makers as well as the perception survey results. You had moderated that panel. What are some of the key pa takeaways that you had from that panel discussion? 
I thought there was you know, one thing really stuck out uh, for me, and it was about the mask market. And Hayashi Son of DNP uh, commented to the question about what's happening with the mask market. Is it growing? Uh, majority of the people thought that uh, it's growing, but the growth is kind of slowed down compared to uh, 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 an unusual growth that we showed in the last two years. Um, but his comment was, well, I don't know. Um, I, I think it's going to continue to grow uh, pretty well because um, look at the number of EUV lithography machines uh, made by ASML uh, that's projected to be out in the market. About 70 are uh, uh, about to hit uh, uh, wafer shops um, across the globe and over the next two years. Um, and uh, uh, that should produce a huge demand for EUV masks, who, which are more expensive, right? Um, so uh, the impact of that on the mask market should be very significant, which um, is very positive for the the, the mask industry. You know? So um, so I, I and I also sense generally um, at the uh, EBM Initiative event as well as at the overall conference a uh, very positive tone uh, to how everybody was uh, thinking and, and talking. So um, yeah, that, that, you know, um, the positive momentum of the mask market was, uh, uh, had a big impact on me. So on the previous day, you had also presented uh, the mask makers survey results in the main program of the SPY Photomass Technology Conference. Mm. So for you, what stood out in the results this year? So I, I um, thought um, multi-beam showing up um, for the first time, uh, uh, to me, that was really significant. And um, um, we know multi-beam um, uh, is, uh, is the next generation mask writing technology. We've known that for a while. Um, but in the surveys, in the mask maker surveys, it hadn't shown up before, and this was the first time that it did show up. Doesn't mean that it was the first time it was used in the world, but you know it showed up on the survey, and I, I, I thought uh, that that's great. And well, I talked about True Mask IoT before as uh, really being enabled by uh, multi-beam mask riders. So um, many things are going to change as a result of this, and among other things, and EUV masks because of um, uh, its, uh, its demand for lower sensitivity or slower resists uh, requires a multi-beam to be able to write the mask. So um, uh, uh, arrival multi-beam is just in time for UV and just in time for IoT. Seems like the timing is perfect, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, as if that wasn't enough, you had also chaired a session of the deep learning. Okay. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit what that was like? Yeah, uh, I, I thought it was great. And uh, I've been doing the deep learning sessions uh, for a couple of years now. And um, uh, th th this was great. Uh, we started with uh, UCAL um, of uh, ASML, Brian, uh, talking about uh, his experiences with deep learning and what uh, his company is doing with deep learning. He, I counted no less than five uh, different applications, uh, not just in the Brian group, but also uh, uh, impacting other groups like Hermes Microvision part of uh, ASML. Um, so uh, that was great. And then it was followed by Ajay Maranwal of uh, CDLE, uh, the Center of Deep Learning in Electronics Manufacturing, uh, talking about five recipes for deep learning. And those two fives didn't overlap. So there were two, ten, ten different um, uh, deep learning um, applications uh, being presented just in the first two papers. And then uh, Synopsis presented, uh, Leo Pang presented about digital twin of SEM uh, pictures, and then uh, uh, AMTC uh, presented uh, about uh, uh, machine learning, non-deep uh, machine learning uh, uh, used for uh, loading effects. So um, uh, uh, you know, machine learning, uh, non-deep kind of machine learning is also a very significant, uh, important uh, use of uh, this AI technology um, for the mask market. So overall, I thought it was a balanced presentation. And then um, after the deep learning session, I saw uh, two other papers outside of that uh, that talked about deep learning um, as a part of their presentation. So I think deep learning is definitely being embedded um, inside uh, the mask community in many, many different 
ways. So um, I, it's, it's great to see that. And uh, it, was, uh, it was fun. Well, wrapping up on deep learning, um, Leo Pang of D2S gave a presentation at the eBeam reception, and it was on digital twins for curvilinear world. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe you can go over the problem that he was looking to address in his presentation, as well as how D2S fits into that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Leo gave two different digital twin talks. And one was on the SEM that I mentioned earlier in the deep learning session, and that's producing SEM pictures, kind of fake SEM pictures, and using deep learning techniques, you take a, a CAD shape, and then it produces a SEM picture, uh, a picture that looks like a SEM picture, and it's used for training for deep learning. Right, if you want to write deep learning applications that take some pictures as input, you want to be able to generate data, and so it's used for that. Um, and then uh, in uh, eBeam in, uh, initiatives uh, uh, session, uh, he gave a paper on a digital twin for True Mask IoT. So he talked about True Mask IoT, but then he also talked about digital twin for it. And what good is that? The, 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 the use for that is because curvilinear uh, mask shapes are new, um, uh, we think that the world needs to be able to generate curvilinear mask shapes so that everybody can test their stuff. Or um, maybe it's also used for deep learning uh, if, if p multiple people want to do deep learning applications that go off of curved linear shapes as well as the traditional rectilinear shapes. And then you need test data, right? You need training data for deep learning. You need test data for testing things like perhaps um, uh, 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 doing uh, mask inspection of uh, curved linear shapes or uh, doing repair using curved linear shapes or there are potentially many, many different things that you want to pipe clean um, making sure that uh, the world is ready for curved linear shapes. And uh, we think that uh, 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 much cheaper on a digital twin that's not uh, that can't be used for real wafer production because uh, deep learning is a statistical method, so uh, uh, it won't be perfect, right? But it's good enough. It's mask rule compliant, and uh, it's good enough for uh, uh, test data for the mask shop. So um, uh, uh, I think that's another way that uh, deep learning technology can be useful. Uh, for the mass community. Well, Aki, I'm going to wrap up and, and thank you for sharing all the news and the excitement of the conference with us. Thank you again. Thank you, Angie. We hope you'll join us for the next edition of the Fine Line Video Journal, and I would encourage you to visit some of the other videos in this edition as well. Thank you.